Welcome guys to the Prabby G channel. Um, I'm Prabby G. We're going to jump straight into it. This is my second video on Gran Turismo Sport and my first race of the day. It was a Group B GT3 race. Um, I'm in the Aston Martin, the uh, DB9 GT1 car. Um, I did a bit of qualifying, qualified in fifth, so I'm quite happy with that. We set off, we're in the snake of the slipstream, everyone's trying to weave to break the toe, but we're trying not to uh, lose it so we can carry as much speed down the straight as we can. Get into the braking zone, I kind of, don't, well, I'm being very tentative. I want to smash it into the back of the cars, but I run wide, really wide, and that cost me a lot of time. I've lost a lot of time off the pack and I've lost a place now. I mean, sixth, losing a place to the Spaniard in the Merc. He also runs wide. And that allows me to catch up a little bit um, and I'm still a bit nervous being the first race we've got to slowly sort of get back into the swing of things get ready for the race and it's a four lap race so it's not too bad um, you can probably gain a couple of places we can still see the pack they're pretty bunched up so there's still gonna be a bit of racing we've got a good run on the Mercedes here um, kind of look down the inside but again don't want to throw the race away on the first lap so we're just gonna you know, do a clean couple of corners make sure that we don't lose too much time to the pack in front that's our main objective we kind of want to stick with them and look we started in fifth if we finished in fifth we've had a good race as far as i'm concerned um we kind of take this corner a little bit wide here crazy cone on the track um and that kind of costs a bit of time. This corner is massively important. If you get this wrong, you're slow all the way down the straight. And we've done a good job here to stay behind the Merc. We're within half a second, so we're definitely within that slipstream. We're about 2.4 seconds from the car in front, so we haven't got to worry about anyone behind. We're just going to sit in the slipstream here, carry the tow as much as we can. I'm not really looking to make a move on the Mercedes, so I'm just going to give it a quick bump draft. I feel like I might have done that in the wrong place because it was a bit too close to the braking zone so I've kind of forced him a bit wide. Um, but he does well, we run, wide. we run wide again on the exit and that costs us a lot of time. As we come into turn 3 here we kind of lift off and break a bit too early here. We're still very nervous on our braking zones. The, the Aston Martin is a poor car for this track, it understeers. Um, it's, it's a terribly understeery car um, and it means that you can't really hit your apexes that well that consistently watching the cone and I kind of hit it and it also means that it is a little bit oversteery if you hit the throttle too aggressively on the exit so it's really a tough car to drive and I did not enjoy it on this track at all um, but we haven't lost too much time to the Mercedes. We're still five seconds off the lead. Um, and we can still see the pack, so we're not too bad. We just need to sort of settle down, make sure we don't make any stupid mistakes. Like here, we run stupidly wide. Pointless. There was no need to run that wide. We're just making schoolboy errors. Even here, our braking's all wrong, and we get the corner catastrophically wrong. We're going to fast forward here. Um, we're sort of on the edge of slipstream. Just get it towards the end of the straight, but it's nowhere near enough. Um, so we're still about 1.6 seconds behind the Mercedes, so we're definitely not getting any slipstream, but we've held a good 3 second lead from the guy behind. So we don't need to worry too much. We can see from that first sector tunnel we've actually done a fairly good couple of corners. Turn 1 and 2 we've done quite well. Um, and we're doing a good job at keeping with the pack. We're not falling back too badly. I think sixth place at this point we're quite comfortable. We can see the Lamborghini in fourth has a penalty so we're quite we could be quite lucky there when that serves out. I can't really see how much it is. I think it's only a second. It's probably got it from corner cutting at some point but we can see the pack is really bunched up there. And we're just coming round the last couple of corners on lap three. Um, just need to make sure we stay close enough to the Mercedes so that we can get the tow down the straight. These couple, these, this lap's been a decent lap. We haven't lost too much time. We've lost a bit of time to the Mercedes. Cone on the track again. Oh, 
cones are deadly. Anyone who's racing Grand Turismo Sport will know that the cones are the worst. We take this corner terribly. Again, we lose a lot of time. We're gonna fast forward here. The Lamborghini serves this penalty. And what it does mean is that the Mercedes and the Lamborghini are now basically side by side on the final lap. We're in sixth place here. Fourth and fifth are battling ahead in front. First to third, they've pretty much gone away. Is uh, Unless they crash, they're not going to really cause us any issue. We've done a really good first sector again. So that means that our lap front is good. The Spaniard in front has just set the fastest lap of the race over 140.3, and that's faster than, that's the second faster than anything we've posted. So they're doing a good job. Yellow flag ahead. We can see someone has just bounced back. We can't really see who that was. I think it was a German guy who's behind us now. And that's given us a position. We're in fifth now, and we can see that second place has a penalty. Um, I really wish I saw what happened. Unfortunately, I haven't got the replay to this race because I just skipped it and didn't save it. The Mercedes goes wide here into the last chicane, or the last couple of chicanes, should I say, and it's kind of given us an opening here. Um, we kind of think about the inside, but it's a dodgy corner to do it. He leaves the door open and then kind of doesn't, so it's not really worth it. But we're in fifth place, we're back in our quality position. You can see the Lamborghini has got a one second penalty that he's serving. The Mercedes goes wide here, we go wide, we avoid the curb, we're sticking really close to the Mercedes here. We think about, I think about going for a wide entry and then take a really narrow exit so I can get the best exit onto the straight. We seem to have the Mercedes here, we're going to go side by side as we go past the final. On the final straight, the Mercedes moves over, hits us once, hits us twice, hits us three times, but we've got the speed, we're in front. The Lamborghini takes third, we take fourth. And that is unbelievable, considering we started in fifth and we were down in sixth. It really was a good race. Generally speaking, I enjoyed that race. Um, it's great racing between me and the Mercedes, despite the hits. So we jump into this next race, which is the uh, day race C, which is in the GT4 cars. Um, we were in the Porsche, we set a really good quality time I think, I really was enjoying qualifying. We're third, there was, we were originally fourth but someone had disconnected, hence the massive gap between us and second. Um, but I enjoyed this track, I enjoyed the um, Porsche, generally speaking, this, I enjoyed this race a lot, I really, really do love the GT4 Cayman. Um, this one has tyre wear and fuel consumption this is the first race I've done online I have no idea what I need to do so I'm just gonna keep on my fuel and just manage the tires really um, you do need to use both compounds the hard and the medium so I started on the hards for this race and I'm obviously gonna pit on the mediums around lap 10 9 10 um, the McGann and the Audi in front have a bit of a lead but it's not too bad we got about 7 tenths, so we're definitely within slipstream. The Czech guy behind us is within half a second, so we do need to keep an eye on what's going to come up from behind as well. Um, the Audi and the McGann are already racing for position. The Audi makes a good move down the inside, but kind of runs wide and scrapes the edge there. That might cost him a bit of time going into this straight. But we're within slipstream. We're going to stay behind the McGann here and just try and make as much time down the straight as we can. Um, probably spent about 15 to 20 minutes during qualifying here, just kind of going around the track as much as we can. Um, and it kind of meant that we were very comfortable with our braking zones as we went into um, each turn. So it meant that come the race, well, I felt really comfortable with where I was braking, what gear I needed to be in, how I was turning. But, ugh, the McGann kind of slowed down a lot more than I was expecting and it kind of made me hit him. Um, I felt really guilty about that, but it hasn't really affected the McGann too much. Um, we get a good run onto the out of the final corner onto the main straight. We look to a move on the inside of the McGann. It's a bit narrow, and we don't really want to start raising into this corner just yet. The Audi in front has got a one-second penalty. At least it looks like one second, and he's got a 2.2 second lead from me. We're two tenths away from the McGann and seven tenths in front of the check guy, so we're okay in where we are at the moment. We're just getting good speed, getting the slipstream, the Audi's going to serve this penalty this lap, so we might be able to capitalise on that. We get a good run on the McGann coming into this corner, I feel like we can carry more 
speed than the McGann could. We get a great exit out of the corner using the slipstream move to the right hand side. The McGann tries to shut the door, it's kind of binding into us. We go on the right of the Audi and the McGann goes just against the wall on the left and so both get past the Audi that served as a penalty. The McGann's now really close behind. We're trying not to let that affect us too badly. And at this point we realise we're leading the race. Yes, this is the first time I've led the race, as far as I remember, and it's the first time I feel proper pressure because I no longer get to watch the car in front and know what I'm catching. I need to set the pace. We've done a good job so far. We've got about a second's lead over the McGann. Um, and we're doing a good job here. We just need to settle down and make sure we're going to set a bunch of consistent lap times here. That's what's the main key, setting consistent, solid laps make sure we do not make any unnecessary mistakes you know we kind of take that corner a bit too slow the gans carry good speed out because it's not about three tenths off maybe four tenths off from the start of the lap and that gap's only getting smaller he's definitely within slipstream range so he's going to be crawling up our backside all the way up this straight as we come into the braking zone here we kind of let the car run to the left break into third, you could probably do that in fourth, I was breaking into third to get the car to turn in, but the Gans really close, he's looking towards the inside line, we're going to leave him as much space as possible, just know where our braking zone is, the Gans backs off a lot earlier than I would expect him to, and then he goes bashing into the wall on the left, that's probably cost him a bit of time there, we've done well, we've stuck to our braking zone, the Gans comes back for a second go, and he just pelts it into the wall on the right, and that kind of turns that one tenth difference into nearly a second. We could just have a quick look back then. We see he's given himself a penalty. We go wide here really badly and we give ourselves a one and a half second penalty. Needless mistake. Really did not need to happen there. And look, it gets we getting into the wrong gear, we're all flustered. We need to get our head calm, collected, set a good couple of laps here. Just to get a good healthy lead. We've got a three second lead here despite the penalty. Uh, the penalty which I believe we're going to be serving this lap. One and a half seconds on this track considering where the penalty is you are going to feel it because it's bang in the middle of the straight and that means you're going to lose all the time after you've served your penalty as well because you're going to be going a lot slower down the straight. Um, we're coming into the corner just before the place where you serve your penalty, you take a nice tight line, great exit, get the speed going, we're pulling away from the McGann, we serve our penalty, but then when we look behind we can see the McGann is also serving his penalty and that allows the check guy to overtake the McGann and be right on our tail, we have a three second lead before we serve that penalty and that's turned into a one second lead, but that's slowly dropping, we think maybe the check guy had a bad couple of corners going into the tunnel and that means that we slowly pull away to a two second lead which is a nice comfortable cushion here as we go into the tunnel we're going to skip forward now a good five laps because nothing really happened we pulled out a 20 second lead and we're coming up to our pit window so we're going to box this lap to go into the mediums as you can tell fuel wise we're just over half a tank and we're well over halfway so we don't need to fuel tire wise we're okay so we're going to go into a set of mediums don't need to worry about fuel First time I've come into the pits, the Porsche guy's doing a great job here. Old tyres off, new tyres on, 3.1 second stop, great job guys. We come out, obviously going in with a 20 second lead, we don't really need to worry about the cars behind us, but we can keep an eye on how much time we've roughly lost. We're still on 22 seconds. Um, and I believe it's going to drop whenever it drops, I don't know. Oh, there we go, 19, 18 seconds. We haven't lost too much time there. And we're on a set of mediums, which means our laps are going to be quicker. We're on a cleaner set of rubber. But again, we're going to skip forward five more laps um, because nothing really happened on those laps either. Um, so we've worn down our mediums a little bit more than we used the um, hard tyres, but still got plenty of grip in them. Um, we can see as we're going along here, we're posted up fastest first sector time which was great it means that we're getting tons of grip from the car we're also getting more confident and with the reduction in weight because of fuel 
we're able to post a really fast lap. We've got 30 seconds here, so we really don't need to worry about anyone behind. We can just focus on a good lap. Sector 2, we're 4 tenths faster, which is great. We're coming into the braking zone for the tunnel. Brake late, we're kind of carrying a bit too much speed and scrape it on the wall on the left hand side. Just need to make sure we don't do that here. Keep it tight on the left into fourth. Let the car stick kind of tight to the right. We're still three, three tenths up. Stay close to the left hand side of the into the tunnel. Into fifth. Get our braking zone just right. Tap the brake. Go into third. Let the car run wide. A bit too wide. Scrape off the wall. It's been a messy lap. It's by no means been the best lap here. We're going to brake. Get into third. Keep it tight to the right hand side. Let the car run wide on the exit. Coming up to the start. Finish straight here. And we post the fastest lap a 120.8. This race was riddled with penalties, as I'm about to show you here. Almost everyone scoring themselves a 20 second penalty or more. But it's our first win. It's our very first win in Gran Turismo Sport. We got fastest slap, gained three places. Overall, great performance. I really enjoy that race and I can't wait for the next GT4 race. But we come back to Daily Race B. This time I gave Quali another go in the Jag. I'm massively improved and I'm now in first with a 139.7. The fastest laps were set by the Hurricane and I believe they're on the 137 mark. So we're about just under two seconds away from the fastest lap. But we're going to go for the spectator view here, just for the first half of the lap. Um, we kind of snake a bit to lose the toe as much as we can. Coming into the first corner, Hurricane's just behind us. We hit our braking zone and the Aston Martin completely launches it. Don't know where he's gone. He's gone off into the wall. Um, not that it bothered us too much. We've had a bad exit coming through turn two and that's allowed the Lamborghini to get alongside us. We're on the inside line. We brake early and we keep a very tight line so as to not run into the Lamborghini on through turn three going around the long turn four and five I believe you can see the Nissan and the McLaren have a good race we've gone wide onto the grass and that's allowed the Beetle to get alongside us here we have a bit of a snake and we lose a lot of time but we're just going to sit behind the Beetle now we're in third it's not too bad we're still in the slipstream zone we've done a good job um, we're just gonna wait for the straight really the Nissan bashes the McLaren and yeah we get punted off the track completely sent into the shadow run we get sent all the way back and here's the onboard somebody hit me in the rear absolutely disgusting I can't work out who I want to blame in that because I can't work out whether it was the McLaren's fault or the Nismos for bashing into the McLaren either way I was the victim of that vicious attack and now we're in 14th well make that 13th there's been a there's been a spin out and it's basically we got to make the most that we can yeah, really um, there's a penalty up ahead um, which is with one of the Beatles. There seems to be a group of Beatles here and the Aston Martin. And we basically now need to keep our heads strong, make sure we don't make any stupid mistakes, we stick with the pack, and we go as high as we can. Quite frankly, at this point, a top 10 finish, I'd be happy with. Um, you can see the Beatle in front has just served its penalty. We're going to use the slipstream to get as close as we can down the straight. Uh, we can see he's sort of zigzagging, kind of goes defensive. We're going to pull all the way to the right hand side, get alongside, hit our braking zone, bang on, and we get in front of the Beetle. We can see, I believe that was the Aston Martin that spun out there, so we've gained two places. We're now in 11th. We can see a small pack in front of us, that's our target. We're about three tenths in front, and the nerves kind of get the better of us. We break early, but the Beetle comes out of nowhere and smashes up. up smashes us up the inside the Jaguar is slow going around turn 4 that causes us to lift and run wide the Beetle gets along the inside and the Beetle makes a ballsy move on the Jaguar I guess it's hit a Jag day because this Beetle's gone for both of us now um, I'm going to stay behind the Beetle here the Jaguar tries to get into the slipstream realises I'm there um, we're going to just hit a normal braking zone there the Jaguar goes deep um, but doesn't go too badly there. The Beetle goes off the track. The Jag gets his payback on the Beetle. It's all going off here. We 
the, the white beetle in front, the jangle, kind of forces a slide, but I'm going to let him off because he probably didn't know how close I was there. So I'm going to let him off. We run a little bit wide. Um, and now we're in 11th again. A couple, bit of ghosting here. We score ourselves a half a second penalty for going wide. A bit unfair considering we were tapped off the corner before, but it's half a second. We can't really complain with the stewards here so far. And this race has pretty much been against us, to be fair. But we're intense. We don't need to worry about serving our penalty until the next lap. So I'm going to sit in the slipstream, carry as much speed as we can down the straight. The beat will get into the slipstream of the jag in front. We're basically getting a tow from both cars here. Um, we're going to look... Oh, both cars go to the inside, so we're going to try and chance it around the outside. The Jaguar breaks early, and that allows us to at least gain one position, so we're in ninth now. We're behind the Beetle in eighth. Um, and we're going to go back to our normal line. I think I'm a little bit nervous, so I'll break very, very early, and that allows the Jaguar to come up the inside, and we're back into tenth there. Do need to be more confident on the brakes. Beetle goes wide, scores itself over half a second penalty, probably for the corner kind that it did around turn three. We're going to go up the inside of all three cars. The Jaguar hits us, and again, I'm going to let him off because he probably didn't see me coming through that corner. Um, but he hasn't really bothered us too badly. I'm in eighth, the Jaguar front is in seventh. We're going to look, the Jaguar kind of blocks the corner, good defending there, kind of means we don't go through. We've been hit up the rear again, and then... And then somebody hit me at the rear again! Yep, we get hit up to the rear again by the Beatles, and it's just chaos back here really. All the cars are just basically popping off, we get sent wide, we kind of come back on. I don't think there was any real issue there, we're being barged along by the Aston Martin alongside us, we kind of shut the door on him, didn't realise he was there, so we kind of go for a wide entry, the Aston Martin goes deep and then goes wide on the exit, we get to cut in, get a good run on the beetle here, both got to serve on half a second penalty, both go down. the Aston Martin doesn't see us, taps us from behind, sets us off and then that allows the beetle to get in front. As we're going down the main straight, we're in line, entering the final lap of the race, we kind of look towards the inside, Beetle takes a last minute defence, we're going to have to chuck it around the arts outside, the Beetle goes deep and bashes into the Jaguar and the Aston Martin bashes into us. And we get a two second penalty and I'm yet to work out what for, I cannot figure out why we scored ourselves a two second penalty, but it is what it is, what are you going to do? So now we've just got to race the Aston Martin that's in front of us here. Um, at this point the penalty is it's pointless for us to try and take the, pen, the penalty into account so we're going to race as if we've got nothing to lose which effectively is the situation we're going to stay as close as we can to the Aston Martin making sure that we can stay in the tow we've got about a 1.2 second lead on the Jag in front coming into the hairpin that I got demolished on um, the Aston Martin runs a bit wide, gets a bit of grass, cuts the corner greatly, sits on the apex and it kind of causes us to hit him. Um, it's not really our fault, they score themselves a half second penalty for the cut. And again we kind of look but we can see how wobbly they are, they are very very slow and it's really costing us. We go wide, let the Aston Martin go deep and then wide on the exit, we cut back in. Great move, if I don't say so myself. We're now into 7th place. We hold our line steady. The Aston Martin gives us a bit of a tap and then forces us out wide. We go massively wide. The Aston Martin takes 7th place back. He serves his half second penalty. We've got 2 seconds. The Jag behind us also had a couple of seconds on their penalty and the Mercedes passes us. Overall, we finish 9th. Considering we started in first, it is not a good performance, but considering everything that happened, that's not bad, and the McLaren finished in fourth. We're going to go again. Same car, same position, we're in pole. Um, we're going to snake a little bit here, just to break the tone as much as we can, but we're not going to worry about that too much. We're going to focus more on our braking zone. We break a little bit later than normal, because obviously the running start means we're not carrying as much speed. Get a good apex there, the car runs a little bit wide, but not as bad as it's done on the last couple of laps. We get a good exit out of turn two, coming into turn three, here, spot on our braking zone at the 100 meter board. Get a good apex, let the car run wide, not wide 
good enough to hit the curb. Probably could have made a bit of time there. This corner used to catch me out a lot. We shift down to third to get the nose to turn in. We've still gone a little bit too wide there, but it's not too bad. Break into second, get the apex, let the car run wide, kind of start to drift a little bit there. That's cost us a bit of time. We've pulled out a one and a half second lead so far, which probably means the guys behind have been battling, and that's good for us. We're going to hit our braking zone at the double cone mark into first, hit the inside curb there, get a nice amount of curb, flat through turn 12 as we run straight into turn 13, making sure we don't understand too much there. We've done that quite well actually. Take a wide entry and come back in into a blue that's turn 15. Onto the last corner here, we're going to go and keep as close as we can to the apex so we get the best exit onto the straight and we can carry as much speed down the straight here. We've got about a two and a half second lead from the Spaniard behind. We've done a very good lap here. Um, as long as we can hit the 139, we know we're hitting our quality pace. Anything 139, 140, we're good. Um, 146, obviously, the first lap is a hard one to gauge. Um, but yeah. The funny thing was, we actually had quite a clean race here. We pulled out 8 seconds, we skipped forward to the beginning of the final lap because there really wasn't much that happened. We did a 140.5 and then a 140.4, so we're quite consistent with our lap times. Um, this has generally been a pole to win race so far, unless something really badly happens, like that we won wide into turn 1, completely missed the apex, but it's not cost us too much time. We get a clean exit through. Turn 2, coming into turn 3, braking at the 100 metre board, a little bit late, missed the apex, let the car run wide onto the kerb. It hasn't cost us too much time, we just need to be a little bit careful about how late we're braking. We take this corner perfectly as far as I'm concerned, get a good exit, hit the braking zone as well as we can, get a bit of kerb there, a little bit drifty on the exit, we need to be a bit more careful. down the two turns here which is basically a straight braking at the 100 meter ball deep very very deep into the corner and that's going to cost us a lot of time here really poor and i can notice at this point our connection went to shit hopefully that's not going to cause us much of an issue but i'm getting a bit nervous and a little bit distracted okay good it's sorted itself out so it's not going to cost us anything and it's not going to cause us any trouble we're just going to come around the last two corners here just making sure that we get a good run onto the straight again we don't want to take any extra risk on around the car too wide don't want to risk a spin that we're onto the straight we've done the big part of the job and yeah overall this was a very good race and it was a bit boring but hopefully i'm going to start to um, level up a bit and i can start racing the big boys but Overall, today was actually a good day of racing. We had a very uh, different kind of race in the third race that we had today. But overall, I thought we did thought we did quite well. Genuinely liked the day's races that we had today. Um, really enjoying the Jaguar. And yeah, we've had two wins today um, and quite a few pole positions. So generally speaking, a good day of racing. Just want to thank everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed the show and uh, hope to see you on the next one. Thanks.